Okay, so we're going to pick up where we left off. Um, we're going to do the positioning of the facial bones, zygomatic arches, and nasal bones. So starting with the facial bones, we're going to do a lateral, a waters, a reverse waters, and a PA Podwell. Those are the standard views. Um, when we're looking at shooting a patient uh, for facial bones, we want to get the patient upright whenever we can. We want to see air fluid levels. So if a patient is able to tolerate, that's what we're going to do. Um, if not, we're going to do them uh, supine. Um, heart position, so you have an MSP of the head parallel with the image receptor. You have your IPL perpendicular to the IR and your IOML perpendicular to the front edge of the cassette. So your central ray um, is perpendicular to the IR, enters the patient on the lateral surface of the zygomatic bone, halfway between the outer campus and the external acoustic meatus. So you, I think they're a little low, but here's your outer campus and here's your EAM. So you're going to go halfway, and they're coming down to the zygomatic bone. I'm Just for visual sakes, I'd actually bring it up a little bit. And we want to cover the frontal sinus. We want to see if there's any uh, blood or air within the frontal sinus. And I, when I shoot my, my um, facial bones, I don't include the mandible. Um, when we cover the mandible, you're going to understand why we don't include it. It's a whole separate deal. A lot of very strange angles. Um, it's not easy to do. And if I'm doing a trauma, I'll open it up so I can see the frontal sinus and all of the mandibles. So you can see here they're clipping off the mandible. So if you're going to do it, do it, include it. <laughs> so don't clip it off and make sure you don't clip off the frontal sinus. It's really important if you're shooting facial bones that we actually see the frontal sinus. So at the level of the zygomatic bone, you're going to be between the outer campus and the EAM. So you're going to enter right about there. This looks pretty good. You've got your MSP uh, perpendicular and your IPL um, uh, parallel and IPL perpendicular. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is supine. As you can see, um, we've got the patient. We're halfway between on the zygoma. You've got your MSP parallel with your IPL perpendicular. Erect versus recumbent. So if they're erect, we see air fluid levels, and it's easier for patients to actually get into position, especially if they're hypersthenic. Um, if we're going to do it recumbent, it's usually for trauma. Um, a lot of the times they're on a backboard, so it makes it even more fun. All right, so lateral facial bones, what we're looking for, this is your evaluation criteria. You're looking that the zygomat uh, zygomatic bones are in the center of the radiograph. There's no rotation or tilt in the optimal exposure factors. So what we're talking about with rotation and tilt we're looking at these orbital plates. We want these orbital plates to be superimposed. We want the ramus to be superimposed and along with the goyons. You have your EAM, you can see that these are off by a little bit, and you can see the plates are off by a little bit. So if they are top to bottom, that is tilt. If they're front to back, that is rotation. So labeling here, you got your frontal sinus, you have your nasal bones, you have your cella turcica, Here's your orbital plates of your frontal bone. You have your maxillary sinus. Um, we have your EAM, hard to see on this one. Your EAM is there. Your maxillary, um, maxilla, and your uh, mandible. So as you can see here, these orbital plates are off by a little bit. We can't see the EAM really to see which one it is, but we can look down here at the mandible and you can see that we have some uh, tilt. So if it was rotation, the rami would be off. And they look pretty good, and down here they look pretty good. It's just these two are off, so the body. So that tells me that there's tilt. All right, so waters. You want the patient upright if possible, MSP uh, to midline of the upright bucky. You want to um, so rest the uh, tip of the chin on the board. So you're going to place your OML to form a 37 degree angle with the plane of the IR. So your, your MML is perpendicular to the IR. So you really have to have them extend their chin out and place it on the board. Uh, your MSP is perpendicular to the IR. You're going to center to the level of the acantheon. So you want your central ray to exit at the acantheon. So put your crosshairs of your board right at the acantheon, and you'll be good. All right, so your CR is perpendicular to the acantheon, and it says an 8 by 10 uh, collimated field. Oh, my gosh. When I come to clinic, I, 
I actually want to see it all the way down to like a four by four. So um, I'll let you get away with like a five by five, six by six if you're really nervous, but I'm going to mark you down. So um, you should be at a four by four for your facial bones. Okay, so you can see here you got your OML forming a 37 degree angle. So you want your mental meatal line to be perpendicular here. So mental meatal. And you can see here your um, OML is a 37 degree. Do we measure this? No. But do we look to see your mental meatal line is um, perpendicular? Yes, we do. And you want it to exit at the cantheon. So you want the uh, to be centered to the cantheon. Okay, so this is if you're doing it prone, you have your CR coming through, you have your mental meatal line perpendicular, so that should form a 37 degree angle. Um, you usually cannot get in trouble for going further than the 37 degree angle. If it's steeper, it's okay. If it's not, then it's a problem. Okay, so make sure that you get at least 37 degrees. You'll have to know these exact numbers. All right. So what are we looking for when we're shooting a water's view? We want the peaches ridges below the maxillary sinus. We want no rotation and it needs to be exposed well. So we're looking for rotation. We're going to take the outer canthus here and we're going to measure side to side. Um, that's the easiest way. You're going to look at your peaches ridges, which are where these black arrows are, and you can see that they're out of these um, maxillary sinuses. These maxillary sinuses are very small, very strange. So a lot of times they're a lot bigger, so they're harder to get the um, petrous ridges out of them. So these are larger, as you can see. Um, this patient has some thickening here. This one's open, and you can see the petrous ridges are below. So you have your orbit here. You have your zygomatic arch here. Whoop, right there, sorry. Um, you have your uh, maxillary sinus. You have your maxilla your peaches ridge down below. So be able to label this. So this is real good. You can see your um, zygomatic arch real well with your maxillary sinus. You can see your vomer here, perpendicular plate. Here's your orbit. So take a look at the orbit. You can see it's a little distorted from the steep angle. We're going to talk about a modified waters in just a minute. And we're going to, uh, I want you to remember what this orbit looks like as we go into the modified. So here's your modified waters. We are, um, we're going to take the lips meatal line. So at the lips is going to be perpendicular. That's going to form a 55 degree angle. <laughs> your OML is going to be 55 degrees to the IR. So if you have your lips meatal line lined up, your OML should form a 55 degree angle. You're going to exit again at the cantheon. So both waters are at the cantheon. Um, it's the ideal projection to demonstrate possible orbital fractures or foreign body of the eyes. So if you're doing an MRI screening waters, this is the one you're going to do. If we're worried about a blowout fracture of some sort to the orbits, you're going to do a waters and a modified waters. You're going to do both typically. We want to see the sinuses really well on a waters and we want to see the orbits really well on a modified. So you can see here the orbits are not as um, distorted as they were before. So you want the petrous ridges projected in the lower one-third of the maxillary sinuses. So you can see the maxillary sinuses and they're in the lower one-third. So if you see this just on your regular waters, you just did a modified waters. See if you need the modified waters before you repeat. And then if you do, you need to um, obviously fix this and get the petrous ridges down below. Okay, we don't want any tilt or rotation. It looks like there's some tilt here. Um, you can see side to side, we're not straight down on your mid-sagittal plane. And then this side looks, it's hard to tell because it's burned out over here. They're using a cone. So um, I would say that there is some rotation. I'm not sure if there is, it's minimal. So that's good. All right, so here we are, modified waters. Um, you can see your OML, 55 degrees, exiting the Cantheon. So there you go, there you go, so lips meatal. Um, You can see the orbits really well and the petrous ridges in, this is about half, uh, more than half, so a little much. So inferior margin of the art, uh, margin of the orbits, we have your maxillary sinus, here is zygomatic bone, your petrous ridge, you can see it coming across. 
your nasal septum, uh, which it composes of your vulmar and your perpendicular plate, and you've got your mandible down below. So if you're shooting it for orbits, you, we want to see the sinus, so I'd cut it off at the teeth, and you don't need the whole skull. So um, you can see that this is not collimated well. You could collimate in real tight, so side to side even. Um, I don't know what they're looking for, but we want to be able to get this in nice and tight so we don't have as much scatter. You can see the scatter on here is degrading the value of the images, so it's hard to see any kind of fracture due to all the fog on the film. Film. I'm old. All right. So your reverse waters. So you're going to put them supine, MSP centered to the midline of the grid. You're going to extend the chin and the neck to place the OML at a 37 degree angle with the plane of the IR. So your MML almost, they put almost, I remember in class Jeremy talking about that. It's not almost. The MML is perpendicular to the IR plane. So ignore the almost. It doesn't count. The MML is perpendicular to the IR plane. The MSP is perpendicular to the IR plane. All right, so it's going to enter the acantheon, and you're going to be obviously centered your IR and CR. Um, you're going to go smaller than a 10 by 12. Um, wow, that would be really big. All right, so you can see here, um, patients who can't tolerate, this is a much easier view for them. Um, a patient that's having difficulty getting the neck um, extended that much, you can put a sponge under their back to kind of have them drop their head back like you would for the SMB. So you have your MML right here entering the Cantheon, and you need to collimate in tighter than what they've got. This is what we're looking at here. Your orbits are going to be magnified because they're further away. Makes sense. Here's just a good zygomatic bone. Here's your maxillary sinuses and your petrous ridges. Um, they are below the maxillary sinus, which is good. Um, do you see how much fog is on here? How much scatter? This is terrible. So collimate it in so that you can get a prettier image. Also, this person is missing a frontal sinus. We have a little bit of one right there. So um, collimate in nice and tight. All right, so doing it on the table there. So here is your Codwell, your PA axial Codwell. You have them seated if you can. If not, you're going to lay them down. Um, MSP centered to midline, forehead and nose resting on the upright uh, bucky or the table. Your OML is perpendicular to the IR, your MSP is perpendicular, and your IR is centered to your nasion. So you're going to angle 15 degrees caudad, exiting the nasion. For orbital rims, you're going to angle 30 degrees caudad. We call it an exaggerated codwell. So if they want an exaggerated codwell for the orbital rims, if there's some kind of orbital fracture, you're going to go 30 degrees. And a lot of times we'll shoot both the 15 and the 30. All right, so you can see here, just like when we're doing the skull, it's going to exit the nasion. Um, you're going to go 15 degrees caudal to the OML. All right, we're looking that the petrous ridges are projected into the lower one-third of the orbits. No rotation and optimal exposure. So labeling here, here's a little cauliflower. We've got um, frontal sinus, Christigali up the top. We have um, your petrous ridge in the lower one-third. You don't want it in the half. You want it in the lower one-third. Here's your ethmoid sinuses on either side, and your infraorbital margin is right here. So when you're doing the exaggerated, it's going to throw this down further so that you can see your um, infraorbital margin. Nasal bones. All right, these are easy. So what we do is basically a lateral. Uh, a lot of times we'll do a waters also. So um, the basic protocol, if you get nasal bones, you do want 290 degrees, so you're going to shoot a waters and a lateral. Um, they may ask for a codwell or a, um, a tangential view, and I'll show you what that is. So with your lateral nasal bones, um, part position, you want them upright whenever possible. If not, I shoot cross table lateral. Um, MSP of the head horizontal, MSP parallel with tabletop, IPL perpendicular, IOML is parallel to the transverse axis of the IR. Um, we have the, the CR is perpendicular to the bridge of the nose. It enters at a point half inch distal to the nasion. So you're going to go distal to the nasion by half an inch. Your collimated fill is three by three. That's great. That's what it should be. Go ahead and pre-collimate and leave it. Don't touch it. So the fill should extend from the gabella to the cantheon and half inch beyond the tip of the nose. So 
This, what they have here is not three by three, it's obviously bigger. And you're gonna go half inch uh, posterior to the nasion. So you have your IPL perpendicular, your MSP parallel, and half inch posterior to the nasion. And you're always gonna do bilateral. So you're gonna do right and left lateral. So here you can see we have the right lateral and three by three, this is nice. And you can see there's a break right there. This also looks like a little break right there. So here is the left side. We have a break and I don't see it there. So um, this is proper here because we're out a half inch from the tip of the nose. This one, you can see we've clipped off part of it. So it, you need to fix the centering so that this one is fixed. They did well. It's a little bit bigger than three by three. You can bring it in. As you can see, you have a lot of wasted space there. Okay, so we have the um, nasal bone and you have your acanthion right there. Here's different views using a cone. Um, you want your nasal bones to be centered with no rotation. You need them properly exposed so you can see them. And you want really close, tight collimation. Um, I used to shoot them with these cones. They're beautiful. So you can see this fracture line right there. So you need to make sure you get enough technique so that you can see the fractures within the nasal bone. All right, so this is the superior inferior tangential, what we call an axial also. And this is not in your book. Um, we added it. Jeremy and I felt it was very important that you had this view. Um, because if you've never seen it before and they ask you to shoot a tangential, you're going to look at them like they have four heads instead of saying, oh, I remember that. I know how to shoot that. So tangential just means like skimming apart. So you're going superior to inferior, skimming the nose. So your IR is perpendicular to your GAL and the CR is parallel to your GAL and it demonstrates possible medial lateral displacement. So it's really good. So you're just going to take a cassette you're going to angle it uh, so it's coming in perpendicular to your CR and you're just going to skim the nose. This is what it looks like. This is your goal. This is what you want to see. So you can see here this bone goes here. <laughs> so we've broken off a pretty good piece there and that would be really hard to see in your laterals. You'd see it on your, uh, your water's view, but there's so much going on in water's view that it could easily be hidden in one of the lines. So it's important that you are able to shoot this view. I've shot it quite a few times, actually. So you want the nasal bones free of superimposition. There's no rotation. You want to make sure you hit it hard enough so you can see that there is a fracture or not. Um, now we're going to go into your zygomatic arches. So we're going to shoot an SMB, a tangential, so another tangential, that means skimming it. We're going to do an um, anteroposterior axial or a modified towns. So, so when we do your SMB, you're going to have them seated or laying down on their back, and you're going to elevate the thorax if they're laying down. You're going to hyperextend their neck, so you place the IOML parallel with the IR plane rest the head um, on the top of the head or the vertex on the IR and your MSP is perpendicular to the IR. Your CR is perpendicular to the IOML, um, enters MSP at the throat level one inch posterior to the outer canthus, canthi. So um, center the IR and the CR in eight by 10. If you're doing it for zygomatic arches, make sure that you don't clip off the posterior portion. So here, this is good right there. So the thing is, they put this to the OML, right? We want it to the IOML. We want the IOML rotated uh, so it is parallel. So she's not far enough back. You want her back further. So this will give you um, an image that would need to be repeated. If you're not able to get your angle to your IOML, you're going to angle your CR to be um, perpendicular to your IOML, okay? So here, if this person couldn't do it, then you would obviously angle your tube. You can angle your central ray on facial bones. Sinuses, you are not allowed to angle your central ray. Um, we prefer you don't angle your central rays at all on facial bones, but if you need to, the SMB is the safest one to angle. So you can see here, they're angling to the infraorbital um, line. So we're gonna angle so it comes in perpendicular. 
and you can see laying down here they're doing the same thing they're angling the idea is not to angle but if you have to angle on any of the views the SMB is the view that is the safest all right so what we're looking for is jug handles so both sides so there's a jug handle there's a jug handle um, you want the zygomatic arch free from superimposition of the facial bones so if they have a real predominant jaw this can be very very tricky you want to see that the mandible and um, the uh, nasion or gabella line up that that GAL line is superimposed everything is superimposed um, we're looking for tilt and rotation so we can see rotation we can look at the angles of the mandible and see if it's lined up all right so here's your zygomatic process of your zygoma and here's a zygomatic arch with your zygomatic process of your temporal bone so a lot of people will come in and collimate real close and they'll clip this off so make sure that you don't clip that off tangential zygomatic arches so you want the patient seated or upright uh, preferably upright because we're looking for air fluid levels whenever we can and you're going to hyperextend the neck to rest with the vertex on the image receptor if you can okay the IOML as parallel with the IR as possible this is where it gets tricky you're going to take the mid sagittal plane of the head 15 degrees toward the side of interest so if it's a right you're going to rotate 15 degrees to the right then you're going to take the top of the head 15 degrees away from the side being examined. So you're going to take your MSP, you're going to turn it towards the side of interest. So you're going to turn, if it's the right side, your MSP 15 degrees towards the side being examined. Then you're going to take the top of the head and you're going to tilt it 15 degrees away from the side being examined. So you're going to tilt it towards the left 15 degrees. You're going to center on the zygomatic arch. So your um, IOML is perpendicular. You're centered at the zygomatic arch at one inch posterior to the outer canthus. And you're going to obviously collimate smaller than an 8 by 10. So here, your mid sagittal plane here coming down is going to go 15 degrees toward the side of interest. And then the top of the head is going to go 15 degrees away from the side of interest. So that's how you shoot a tangential. So then we're going to go. Um, center to the zygomatic arch at a point one inch posterior to the outer canthus. So here's the outer canthus. You're going to go one inch in, so at the zygomatic arch. So we're coming in right there. All right, so here is the display. So we go 15 degrees toward the side of interest. And then we're going to take the back of the head and we're going to tilt it 15 degrees away from the side of interest. So, oh, we're having fun now, huh? So top of the head, 15 degrees that way. And what that does, it kind of opens it up. So 15 degrees MSP towards the side of interest, top of the head, 15 degrees away from side of interest. So tricky, tricky. Okay, so here's what it gives you. So this is the uh, temporal process of your zygomatic um, bone. And here's your zygomatic arch with your temporal process of your zygomatic arch. So it's great jug handle right there. So that's beautiful. That's your goal. You want to see that and see if there's any fractures within that. All right, so um, your modified town, so the AP axial of your zygomatic arch, have them seated or upright, MSP perpendicular to midline of the grid, your OML perpendicular to the IR. You may use IOML, but increase the CR angle by 7 degrees. So CR angled 30 degrees caudad to the gabella, approximately 1 inch above the nasion. If OML is being used, you're going to use 37 degrees caudad, Um, and you're going to collimate more than 8 by 10. So here um, we have, let me check something, gabella. So this, they're at the nasion. The gabella is one inch above that. So here's your nasion. So they should be a little bit higher. I, I feel like this is too low, especially with her eyebrows being squished together. <laughs> so I'd come up a little bit higher. Then we're going to go 30 degrees caudad to the OML. So here's your OML, and you're going to go 30 degrees, one inch, or at the gabella, or one inch above the nasion. Okay? So you can see 30 degrees, and table. This is what we're looking at. Um, this is so close. Oh my gosh. I would probably have you repeat this. So you can see it coming out and around, but 
here's your ramus. I'm having problems. Eh, they got it. It's just so close. Um, they need to shift down. They are too high. So I'm not a real big fan of this. I think that they, um, they really need to take this and shift it down. We don't need all of this. We can clip this off, but I want to see a little more down low just in case. Um, but you're coming around here, so you should be fine, but will we? All right. So those are your views. Now we're going to go through the evaluation of the facial bones. So when we're looking at the lateral, what we're really looking for is evidence of proper collimation. Your book does not have the proper collimation. You need to bring that in a lot tighter than what they have. Um, if you do this for your exam with Jeremy, um, I'm not sure if he's going to mark you wrong, but in clinic when we see it, we're going to mark you down for not collimating properly. You, your book is way too loose with your collimation. So all facial bones in their entirety with the zygomatic uh, bone in the center, the rotation or tilt. Um, how do we know it has that? So almost perfectly superimposed mandibular rami, superimposed orbital roofs, and the cella trisca is perfectly in profile. The brightness and contrast demonstrate soft tissue and bony trabecular detail. So looking here, you got your frontal sinus, your nasal bones, cella trisca. So I don't really use this because the bones are so small, but I use the orbital plates the ramus, the body, to see along with the EAMs. On your waters, we want evidence of proper collimation. Oh my gosh, your book is terrible. Um, entire orbits and facial bones on it. <laughs> so don't clip off your orbits or your maxilla. Um, no rotation or tilt. Um, evidence by distance between the lateral borders of the skull and the orbits are equal on each side. The MSP of the head is aligned with the long axis of the collimated field. So the petrous ridges projected immediately below the maxillary sinuses, so they should not be in the maxillary sinuses. And brightness and contrast demonstrate bone and soft tissues. So here we've got the petrous ridges below the maxillary sinuses. Yay! Um, and you're looking from here, outer canthus, to the outside of the skull to see if there's any uh, rotation on the patient. So you can look at your MSP and make sure you're straight. But this is a great example is to do not use the nasal septum to be your guide if the MSP is straight because as you can see this patient has had a nasal fracture where it is not straight. So your reverse waters, so you, proper collimation, entire orbits and facial bones on there, no tilt or rotation by uh, the lateral borders of the skull and the orbits on either side, and the MSP is aligned along access. So the petrous ridges are projected below the maxillary sinus, and brightness and contrast demonstrate soft tissue and bony, trabecula, and as you can see with the reverse waters that the orbits are magnified, so that's how you know. And your PA Codwell projection, you want proper collimation, uh, entire orbits and facial bones, and you want no tilt or rotation by equal distance from the lateral borders of the skull to the lateral borders of the orbits on either side, symmetric petrous ridges lying in the lower third of the orbits, and the MSP is aligned with the long axis of the collimated field. You want penetration of the front bone with appropriate brightness and at the lateral borders of the skull, which shows facial bones. So. Looking here with the PA Codwell, we have your frontal sinus with your Cristigalli. You have your superior more, uh, orbital margin, and you have your superior orbital fissure right there. Ethmoid sinuses on either side. Here's your petrous ridge in the lower third, and um, you've got your petrous ridge. Yeah, that's it. And your infraorbital um, margin down right along there. All right. So your lateral nasal bones, um, you want evidence of proper collimation, remember three by three. Nasal bones, um, anterior nasal spine, and your frontal nasal uh, sutures all displayed. You want no rotation of the nasal bones and soft tissue, and you need to penetrate it properly. So you can see here, um, this one is proper, but you need to collimate in a little bit tighter. This one we're clipping off the end of the nose, so we can't see the cantheon. All right, your SMV of your zygomatic arches, um, evidence of proper collimation, your zy zygomatic arches free from overlying structures, no rotation or tilt of the head, evidence by zygomatic arches symmetric without foreshortening. Ah, brightness and contrast um, to see your bony trabecula. So you can see here there's a fracture on the left. Um, you can see well, uh, it's 
properly penetrated. This is collimated really well in addition. This is what I like to see. So you have your temporal uh, process, wait, temporal process of your zygomatic bone and your zygomatic arch. So um, tangential, we're looking for proper collimation, zygomatic arch free from overlying structures and penetrated properly. So you can see here, this one is ooh, just a little light. This one's penetrated a little bit better and you can see the bone a little bit better there. All right, so evidence of proper, this is your towns, proper collimation, no overlying of zygomatic arches by the mandible. Uh, no rotation or tilt by symmetric arches, zygomatic arch projected laterally to the mandibular rami, and MSP of the head aligned to the long axis of the collimated field. So you, you also want to penetrate it properly. So this one is um, not collimated enough, so can't win, right? So I'd clip it right about here, I'd collimate down to right about there, and I would take the whole mandible off. But I do want to see all of this. On the other one, I wasn't 100% sure I could see all of this. Um, so here's your occipital bone. Here's your mandible coming down here. This is your zygomatic arch coming around. Here's your zygoma. So um, you really want to see this whole thing. On the one that the slide earlier, I wasn't 100% positive I could see all of that. That made me nervous. <laughs> all right. So your SMV of your zygomatic arches. You want your um, proper collimation, of course, your arch is free from overlying structures, no tilt or rotation, and you want your zygomatics without any kind of um, anatomy overlying. So we can see there. All right, so that's it. Those are your positions of your zygomatic arches, nasal bones, and facial bones.